Good evening, happy live. I am changing up my location. I normally sit um, in my, I guess, Eaton kitchen or something like that. And today I just decided to sit here. Um, normally just with the backlight, it's kind of hard to see, but I know you guys don't really care what I look like and you're just more wondering what's going on in the world of real estate. So I am going to sit over here. I'm going to do my normal, so I'm going to talk about what's going, uh, been going on locally in real estate as well as in other parts of Canada, and we will do question and answer, so if you want to ask any questions, feel free to do so, as well as uh, we do some happy news, okay? So we will start first with a question. Uh, so the first question is from Brittany and Hawkstone, and again, you can write in here, or I can just go through the people that have asked throughout the week. So Brittany and Hawkstone um, is first. So Brittany said, I recently just purchased a home and it was pretty tight to make it happen. So to say I'm limited on budget would be an understatement. What would you say are the cheapest things I can do but still brighten up the space or give me some sort of feeling that my own stamp is on it? Um, thank you, Brittany, for asking and much congrats on your new property. Um, obviously, when you say brighten up, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously painting. Um, and most people's, you know, minds go there. So I don't know what kind, um, you know, of colors they have going on, but painting is super cheap. To be honest, flooring is not uh, super expensive just with how far laminate has come and its quality. So let's just say it's got some blue carpet or pink carpet or whatever. Laminate is not super expensive. I don't know how tight your budget is, but that might be something that you could do. Um, as well as even just changing knobs, painting cupboards, um, again, depending on your budget, you could do a counter in your kitchen. You could do a vanity. You could get like vanity sets and they'll come with the vanity, the tap and the mirror. Um, there's ones, you know, like 350 to 500. Again, I'm not sure exactly your budget. Um, there's even like little sticker things. So like people do a kid's room or an office space and they'll paint a space and then they do like these little sticker decals or whatever you call that. Um, so you can brighten up a space. You could um, take certain cupboards out and put like um, open shelving. Um, but those are just some main things. Obviously you can do, I don't remember what it's called, but like um, when you put it down outside around your flowers, oh mulch. Um, you could do like mulch around outside with, you know, some fresh uh, flowers and some plants. I'm not a gardener of any type, so don't ask me if they're annuals or perennials or what have you. Um, but that would be the main things I would say, and thank you for asking. Um, so first, some happy news um, before we get into real estate. So there was a seven-year-old little man, a uh, little boy that saved basically his sister and his dad's life. So um, it was in Florida and he, his name was Chase and he was swimming with his sister Abby who was four and his dad was um, fishing and his little sister floated away a little bit so he went to go get her but there was a current so he couldn't get back to the boat. So uh, both their father, obviously the same father, jumped in and realized the current and he couldn't get to them either and they eventually all drifted separately. Only the little girl had a life jacket on um, so they were all separate. And the dad basically said his goodbyes and it was like heart wrenching basically because I saw the video, but um, the video after because luckily they all lived. The seven year old little boy ended up, he kept floating on his back and so he would get um, energy and um, rest himself and then he'd swim as hard as he could and then he'd float on his back again. Anyways, after like an hour he got to shore and he ran to a neighbor's house and they um, rescued his dad and his sister. So super cute, this brave little seven-year-old. Um, so that's what happened, so I like that. Um, the next question came from Maggie and Creamore. Again, feel free to ask questions on here if you want. So Maggie and Creamore said, I really want an investment property but don't fully have the funds. My best friend's husband is a contractor and I suggested us splitting everything, but he is afraid of everything and it seems I can't think of anyone else. Why is it so hard for people to see the potential? Um, thank you, Maggie, for asking. And yeah, a lot of people don't see the potential. Um, I was just talking to somebody today about that, actually. And I said, if I had listened to everybody, I would still be living in my townhome, um, which was not like an end unit or anything, like no offense to the people in the middle of the unit townhomes, but I would still be there um, if I was still listening to them. So not everybody is up for the risk or wants to take that. They think like, what if the market crashes or what if the interest rates go up or what if the tenants don't pay or blah, blah. So not everybody obviously has your will to take that jump and that leap. Um, so if you can try and save up yourself or get a co-signer or something, obviously then you can do it. You don't have to split it with anybody 
or I guarantee there are other people out there that are as same mindset of you as you and they do want to retire earlier or they want to have that extra passive income or what have you so those people do exist maybe it's just not the one you're currently asking but thank you for asking Megan I wish you the best of luck um, the next thing was about a high school student in Louisiana so he went to graduate and obviously graduating um, is exciting for kids COVID or not they I'm sure are still all about it so he had his whole gown on and so forth and he went to go into the auditorium and the person you know at the door wouldn't let him go in and he didn't really understand why and it's turned uh, turned out because he had sneakers on instead of dress shoes so he was kind of like pacing up and down the hallway and one of his teachers came up and approached him and asked why he wasn't with his friends and he said because you know they won't let me in with my sneakers so the teacher ended up giving him his size 11 dress shoes he took the uh, boys size 9 running shoes the little boy was not little he's a teenager the boy was able to go and the young man to graduate and um, happily ever after so anyways I like that thinking ahead and uh, outside of the box for the lady that wouldn't let him in um, the next question comes from Grant and Lafroy so Grant and Lafroy said my wife and I want to retire and travel more uh, and then it says well when COVID is better but I'm afraid we will go through our savings too quickly if we are uh, if we're lucky and healthy enough to live another 25 years do you think we should keep our house or sell it um, thank you Grant for asking to be honest I obviously don't know how much money you have in your home hi Margie how are you um, I hope everything goes well tomorrow Margie um, so I don't know Grant how much you have in your home obviously because you can like say okay we're gonna spend this amount per year or what have you so I can't really comment on that um, but if you're not comfortable you could always keep your home um, depending on what it is maybe it's not suitable for rental maybe you want to buy something you know with two units or something maybe you want to buy something that's uh, more suited for a short-term rental and let's just say you're like oh we want to come back and see our dentist and see our kids and blah blah, blah and we want to block it every whatever months for three months and then the rest of the time will be out of the country you could always do that if you don't feel you know that you will have enough money to basically do everything that you want so you could keep your foot in the door in real estate because real estate is still expected to go up so that would be smart for you as well um, so that is basically what I would do but again I don't know how much you have because you might have more than enough and not need to and not have to worry about tenants or anything happening or partying or what have you so I kind of can't fully comment on that and also you guys have to decide what is best for you but thank you for asking um, so the next thing I think there was one more thing before real estate um, there was oh yeah randomly prison <laughs> prison populations are going down in the United States um, so which is good and they're turning the prisons into like unique things so like homeless shelters um, one turned into a movie set and then one turned into an educational farm um, so basically there was 2.1 million people that went into prison which is a crazy amount of people um, in 2019 and 1.8 went in 2020 this was in the states okay um, so what they basically uh, did in Connecticut in this one they turned it into homeless shelter so they've already helped over 15,000 people uh, you know have a warm night's sleep and then 1,500 people they've helped them get them into an apartment or a home and um, they have like medical there uh, medical care there they do mental health there they do yoga um, they do cooking classes they do a whole bunch there so it's just neat that they're repurposing the prisons and then the other one um, focuses on at-risk youth as well as veterans um, that have been injured and they have these farms they can go there learn about all the agriculture and so forth and they can get university degrees in uh, um, not environmental science oh yeah it is environmental science so anyways I just thought that was cool um, I am going to get back into real estate now so in the real estate world what has been happening um, so I'll let you guys know Simcoe wise and so forth um, so in May in Simcoe there was 672 sales so that was 62.3 percent over last year sales um, in the first five months so obviously January to May was five months um, there's been 3,172 sales in Simcoe County and this is 84.3 percent more than the first five months of last year which is great and Barry uh, individually saw over 76% more sales than last year. Um, the average home in Simcoe County in May sold for over $821,000, which was up over 38% uh, of last year. 
And um, the year to date average uh, was over 793,000. And that is up over 38% of last year. So things are up and up. Um, and when we look at just berries, so um, year to date, so obviously January till right now, the average sales price is now 719 and change. I don't like the change because it just, uh, I feel like it confuses people. And that's up over 37% over last year. And then if we do the rest of Simcoe, so not berries, so Essa, Oro, Springwater, um, Innisfil, et cetera, um, the average there is now over 881,000. And that is up over 40% uh, percent of last year, 40.2 to be exact. Um, and then the home sales value. So let's just say a home sells for 600,000 or a million or whatever. They add up all of that uh, year to date up until now. I just lied, not up until now. It was only in May. I lied. Um, all of the home sales values in May. And it was 552.1 million, which was more than double last year's. And it was the highest May ever for the amount of homes sold, the amount of real estate in Simcoe County, okay? So that's crazy. Uh, we are getting more inventory now. So there was 910 new listings in May in Simcoe County. And even though there was nine uh, over 900 listings, that was 52.3% less than the last five years average of what there was in May, okay? So even though, yes, there's quite a fair amount of listings, it's still less than normal and what we should have. And I know that it's kind of confusing because sometimes I say like Barry and sometimes I say May and year to date and Simcoe County and so forth. So I apologize that I jump around a bit. If you guys have any questions, you can write them in here or feel free to write to me after or what have you. Um, so last month, uh, 55 condos sold and that was in Barrie and the average sales price was 503,000 change for condos. I am in a condo uh, right now. And last month in Barrie, there was seven, not there was, the average sales price was 743,000 and change for a home. And then the rest of Simcoe County, again, Innisfil, Essa, et cetera, they are higher at just over 830,000. Aurelia saw 72 sales last month and their average sales price is now 683 and change. To me, to think of like a real, a really as 683,000 is insane, um, but it is what it is and things have changed a lot. Uh, in Essa, the um, number of homes that sold last month were 44 and they averaged 784 out there. And if we do all of Simcoe County, there has been over 4,800 homes sold, 4,872 to be exact this entire year. And that is over 88% more than last year for the amount of homes sold in Simcoe County, okay? And if we do that, the average sales price is just over 767,000. And that is over 44% higher than last year. Yes, Sarah, let's hope next year. Sarah is moving to Aurelia. Um, I won't say before where you live, it doesn't really matter, you're moving by Wasega slash Elmvale. She flips houses, uh, smart lady, her and her husband. Um, so year to date, there has been 223 condos which have sold in Barrie and the average sales price is now just over 479,000, which is up over, um, 23% over last year. And the 223 that have sold this year is more than 83%, uh, the condos that sold last year. And so last year in Barrie, an average detached home was 584. This year it is 870, which is insane, 584 to 870, almost $300,000 difference. 584 to 870 is ridiculous. Um, that's up over 48.9%. So last year on average in May, you could get a semi-detached home for 450,000 and now they are averaging over 633,000 for the same homes. Townhomes last year were averaging 419 and now they're averaging 637 in Barrie. Condos last year were averaging 363 in May, and this year in May they averaged 534. Uh, so how did the first week in June go in Simcoe County? Um, so there was 367 new listings. Last year, for example, there were only 261. So there were over 40% new listings. And um, what did I just say that? Yeah, 40.6% new listings. Um, and this year of those 367, 266 have already sold. So 266 of the 367 have already sold. Last year, only 151 had sold at this time, okay? And last year, the average sales price uh, was 508 in the first week of June, and this year it is 806. So basically, consistent, 
consistently we're seeing around $300,000 up from last year, which is pretty messed up and crazy. Um, obviously, because there's some people back in the day that lived in homes for like 40 years and they didn't make that kind of money, let alone in a year. Um, so now that you guys know what's happening locally, um, I'll say what else is happening. So luxury real estate is going up like crazy as well. So that's like million dollar, multi-million dollar properties, etc. So basically they're saying it's not just Toronto and Vancouver um, that are experiencing multi-million dollar properties, but other places as well. But why are people going to multi-million dollar properties? Well, a lot of people during COVID are like, I want to spend more time with my family. So they're moving elsewhere where they can mm -hmm. afford more um, and possibly get, you know, million dollar properties or so forth. They're selling off mm -hmm. if they have, say, a rental property. They are sick of tenants um, or they're just cashing in on the market so they have more money. And then a lot of people that have gotten out of the stock market. So that is happening. Um, and basically it said over $2 million homes are selling just way faster than they have ever on record. Um, so the government obviously has realized this, so they want their cut. So they're talking about this thing called a luxury tax. So, so far it's only supposed to, it's not 100%, but they're talking about it in Toronto. So it would go in Toronto if the house was more than $2 million and you'd have to pay an extra 3.5% tax every year. And some people say, oh, well, they have enough money. So that is that if you feel that way. They are guessing that that will bring in some $18.7 million in tax every year uh, if that were to happen. But other people are saying that that's not going to help because there's already a lack of inventory in Toronto and that's going to make it harder for anybody to get into Toronto in general, which already is hard to get into Toronto. I think it was last week I said that it takes 23 to 25 years to save for a down payment in Toronto depending on the price and interest rate. So if they do that, it's even harder. Uh, if this happens, it'll be the only city in Canada that has this luxury tax. Um, and a lot of people say, you know, like it'll help and it'll go towards low income uh, families because they'll build, you know, homes for them and they'll help with transit. So they're like, it's a Robin Hood thing, you know, um, steal from the rich uh, to feed the poor or give to the poor, etc. And other people say it'll just worsen the supply issue and they should not do it. So that is currently what's going on in that. Um, if you're wondering about any luxury properties. So for example, in Montreal, their luxury properties, um, more than 23% have sold this year than last year and we're only into May. So obviously things are going very busy there for luxury properties. There was even a condo that sold that was over $4 million for a condo. Uh, in Toronto, they count luxury homes as over $4 million. So that has been up over 157% over last year. So over $4 million homes are selling a lot more in Toronto. There's already been five this year that have sold over $10 million in Toronto. And uh, last year there was only one home the entire year that sold over $10 million. So lots of moolah in Toronto as well. And in Vancouver, they do the same as Toronto. So they count it as more than $4 million. And they're up 41% um, the amount of homes selling, not their sales price, okay? And then there was a, a report from CIBC and CIBC said since the pandemic initiated, it's the most cash people have had, whether people were getting out of the stock market or selling off things or what have you out of fear and not knowing what was going to go on. But now they're saying, what, now that they know that the market is well, and whatever, they're putting their money um, back into real estate as opposed to stocks or wherever they took their money out of. Um, so the Bank of Canada, announced today that they're going to keep their rate at the quarter point which is 0.25 and they do their rate every eight or sorry eight times every year usually on a wednesday so it happened to fall on today originally they said they were going to um keep it low till about 2023 and now they're mm -hmm. expecting around 2022 the latter half of 2022 just depending on the market basically they're like once the market is fine and people are working and businesses aren't shutting down and blah, 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 then they will up the rate. So the next rate, um, not rate, next time it goes up, but the next time they announce if they're gonna do anything is July the 14th, then it jumps to September the 8th. So that is Bank of Canada. And then the Royal Bank, um, they're complaining a little bit as well, because they're saying it's still too hard for people to get into the market. So they say, yeah, you know, you're um, putting this vacant tax possibly on properties in Toronto and maybe this luxury tax or whatever. Um, they might also do a tax for unused properties if you don't live in it. Um, if you say for seven months of the year it's vacant or what have you, they might do a tax on there. 
and they've tightened the stress test, but they're saying they're all just temporary fixes and nothing will really do anything and that the market will still continue to elevate. So Royal Bank is complaining about that and um, they're just saying the lack of inventory is not going away. So it's gonna con continue to go up regardless of these things and they're saying that they need to step in and all the policymakers need to do more things because they think it's still too out of reach. Hi, Scotty. Um, Okay, so it is guessed that 636,700 people are going to move in Canada this year, not immigrate from different countries, but just move, whether from a townhouse to a blah, blah, wherever they're moving. So that is what is expected to happen this year. So that extra tax that I talked about, like for uh, vacant or um, um, what was the other one? Oh yeah, the other one is called speculation tax. So if the people work outside of Ontario majority of the time, uh, so they're both expected originally, they said it would be a 1% tax, and now they are saying it's going to be a 2% tax. Um, no worries, Scotty. Um, but that is still not set in stone. So that is my gist on that. Um, just reminding you guys of the $2,500 giveaway. Hi, Devin, how are you? Um, the $2,500 giveaway. So we give away $2,500 on the first day of every month. So if you guys want to nominate anybody, just send a written or a video submission to info at cripshomes.com. Again, info at cripshomes.com. And on the first of every month, we will surprise somebody with a check. They do not have to have any relation to Crips Realty and never have thus far. Um, just say who they are and they must live in Simcoe County and they must live or they must be over the age of 18. Uh, so feel free to nominate. Okay. So the next question comes from Suzanne and Craig in Barrie. So Suzanne and Craig said, uh, we, we really enjoy all of your content and giving advice and so forth with investing. I was wondering if you had a mentor that you looked up to when you started uh, buying and selling who guided you in the right direction. Um, thank you, Suzanne and Craig, for asking. To be honest, I didn't. I had a lot of people telling me not to do it. Um, and eventually, after six or seven years, I just got sick of people telling me not to do it and just seeing the prices go up. You know, homes that I used to see for, I'm dating myself, but I used to see for like 120, were then selling for 290 or whatever, and that was frustrating me. So I decided that I wanted to get in regardless of what anybody said. So no, I didn't have a mentor. I just basically did it trial and error. Um, like my first home, for example, I only made 6,000, which obviously was eaten up in real estate costs. But then as I got going and realized what to look for and what neighborhoods to look for and what to do and and you know not just to buy with emotion and so forth. So I literally just did it by trial and error and lost some money, but then obviously figured out the ins and outs of it so I could make money. Um, but thank you for asking. Okay, so the next thing, um, obviously we all know about um, global warming. So there is a place that's basically making a floating city. It's just uh, south of um, the Maldives and um, it's a Dutch architect and they're gonna start in two years and supposedly finish in five and it's like this whole floating city and it's over um, 500 acres and there'll be schools on it and roads and homes and bridges and hospitals and so forth. Did not say the price of it of how much to build but obviously it can't be cheap. Um, but they're just saying with global warming and you know things eroding away or water levels getting high and so forth that they just wanna have everything ready for when it happens. So they're doing that, which I just thought was cool. Again, that's by the Maldives, or however you say that word properly. Maldives, yeah, I guess so. You say it like that. Um, the next question it comes from Dominic in Holland Landing. Um, Dominic said, my family has an Airbnb in Huntsville, and we're thinking of being more hands-off. Do you know what kind of price we should expect to pay a management company? Um, thank you, Dominic, for asking. So if you are renting out uh, an apartment or what have you, a home, they normally take one month's rent or 10% is common. So if you rent it for $2,000, um, they're gonna take one month's rent. Usually they get half the month's rent and the other realtor gets half the month's rent or 10% is also common um, of the whole year, not of um, one, one month. And um, so that is that, but in short-term rentals, they tend to want more. So many of them want 20. I've heard of them even up to 35. And then if you got like a management company that was larger, say for example, like Collingwood and they manage all the ones at Blue Mountain, they have even take even more. Um, but maybe you can find somebody that will do it cheaper, but basically they know that you're making more money. So therefore they want to make more money. 
but they also know there's more turnaround. So it's not like one family living there for the whole year that might call them twice, once about a stove and once about a branch falling on their side view mirror or something. They know that there's turnover all the time, two, three, four, five times a week. So they know they have to do more work. So therefore they want to be compensated more. So that is the average. There's also, um, you know, companies out of like say the Philippines or Vietnam or what have you, and you could have a virtual assistant. Those are much cheaper. Um, obviously it's not somebody locally that could drive up, but they could obviously Google a person to drive up that's a plumber or that is something that you might need. So that might be an option for you. So thank you for asking and good luck with your um, cottage up in Holland Landing. Um, is b and a better way to go uh, or normal rentals? Um, Sarah, you get way more money for Airbnb, so you get more money in a week than you do in a month, and you also have more protection. So let's just say that, for example, I was renting this uh, yearly and they didn't pay their rent. I have to do like the N4, the L1, blah, blah, go to court. And before COVID, it was say one and a half to two and a half months. And now during COVID, the shortest I've ever heard of anybody getting into court is six and a half months. And a lot of them are like nine or nine and a half months. So you as an owner are then paying the mortgage this whole time and the tenant is not paying you. So the tenants have way more rights um, than if it's a short-term rental. If it's a short-term rental, they're supposed to check out at 11. They don't check out, it's 12. You call Airbnb, Airbnb, you are then allowed to call the police. They will go there. You're allowed to have somebody go there, change the locks. If somebody does not pay your rent, mm -hmm their rent you are not allowed to go change the locks you have to go through the whole thing and even if you do change the locks you have to give them a copy to the new door which makes no sense because that defeats the whole purpose of changing the locks so you just have more rights if they party or if they wreck something or whatever than if they're tenants if they're tenants it takes a really long time to get them out and you make less money um, than if it is a short-term rental uh, you can get them out right away so even if they booked it from a Saturday to a Saturday if it's Sunday afternoon, they've only been there a day, you are able to get them out. So you can call Airbnb and say, listen, the police are there. The neighbors called because there's people swinging off the balconies and there's this, that, and the other. Airbnb will say, would you like to cancel the reservation? You're, you say yes. And basically you say, what does that mean? It says you still get paid for it, but the reservation gets canceled. Then you can call the police, show them that the reservation was canceled, and then they can get the people out. You can get the locks changed and Airbnb has a million dollars of insurance as opposed to it going onto your insurance and your rates going up and what have you, Airbnb does all that. So let's just say they knock down that light back there that looks like a tree or they break the sliding door, or they break something, then you take pictures of it, you send it to Airbnb and so forth. Whereas, you know, you go through insurance and you're deductible and this, that, the other, there's not a deductible with Airbnb, so it just goes through. So it's just a lot easier. And again, you make more money. So majority of people, um, um, you know, want that. I can't think of the word, <laughs> prefer. It's not like that's a hard word. Thank you, Sarah, for asking. Um, okay, so there was two guys, Marty and Jeff, and they both served in the military. They both owned a business together and like nature and so forth, and they were partners um, for over 30 years. And partners, not like business partners, like um, husbands. And um, anyways, Jeff passed away from cancer and um, Marty, instead of selling the property, which he was offered over $3 million for because they have this massive acreage in New Jersey, he decided to donate it to um, a company and they have rehabilitation centers and specifically, so they did this rehab center for veteran, not veterinarians, veterans um, who have addiction problems. So they have, they're building an 8,000 square foot um, addiction center and it also will have um, treatment and training to help them like get back into society and so forth. So I thought that was very cute. Um, and did you guys, oh no, I have a question first. A question first from Marilyn, sorry, and then I'll say that. Um, Marilyn first, you know problem, Sarah. Any other questions, just ask. Um, Marilyn said, hi, Kristen. Uh, I met you years ago when you sold my brother's home. I uh, came when they did their home inspection. Anyways, I'm still living in my same house and the neighborhood is really becoming all student rentals. I wanted to redo my siding, fix up the driveway and maybe put a new deck on the back. I'm leery though that landlords won't care and I'm just wasting my money. What do you think? Uh, thank you, Marilyn, for asking. I definitely don't think that... Um, Catherine, are you saying about the two fellows and he um, gave all the land, all the acreage? I agree with you. 
Um, I definitely don't think, Marilyn, about the siding. You're not going to get your money out of siding. The last time I did siding, it cost me, I don't remember, 8000 And that was a really long time ago. Like, maybe eight years ago or something. So it's probably like sixteen or 20000 now. And people are going to be like, yeah, they're siding. They're not going to sit there, oh, you spend all this money on siding. So you're not going to get your money out of that. So I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, a deck I'm not against, um, except the price of wood is really high right now. Um, but landlords and tenants would like that. Um, whether you paint or you do some floors or, you know, do some bathrooms or whatever, the main things people always look at are the kitchens and the bathrooms and the floors. And then the main things they ask are when was the roof done? When were the windows done? When were the furnace done? Um, they don't say when was the siding done. Most people would just paint the siding if they don't like the color of it. They won't redo it just because of the cost factor. Um, driveway, it just depends on the cost for that. I would probably just put a, you know, when they come around and ask you if you want that new black coat. If it's super bad and you could get it done for cheap, sure, but honestly, you're not going to get your return. So let's just say they're like, oh, it's 7000 You might get a 1000 of that back. So I personally wouldn't do that. Um, I would look more at your kitchens and bathrooms. Um, or just save it for your next house because if your neighborhood is that popular for rentals and maybe you can walk to the um, college, then I would just um, take it to the next house. Um, yes, yeah, so I was saying about the guys giving the land. Any advice for someone considering being a real estate agent in today's market? I have a couple of properties personal and have considered becoming, sorry, it says see more, so I have to click on that. Um, I have a couple of properties personal, mostly to live and flip. Do you have any tips? Um, yeah, Catherine, so... Back in the day, to be honest, when I did it was different than now. So now it goes through, uh, I believe, Humber College. So when I did it, it was, you could do it online, you could do it at home, or you could do it in class. Um, and when I did it, it was three sections, and then two you had to do within two years. And now you have to do the five, which is basically the same three that I did plus the two, but now you have to do the five before you get your license. And then um, you have to do one in your articling phase, which is your first two years. So they just divided it a bit differently. Uh, to be honest, that's why I got into real estate was for my own personal use. I was a registered massage therapist before and I just got it for my personal use um, because I like to buy and sell homes. I would buy a home, make it really pretty, and then I would be bored. So I um, uh, just decided I would do it to save my own real estate fees. And then I started doing it more and more and people started to refer me more and more. And then I eventually stopped doing massage. Um, it's hard, like if, for example, you want to do it part time and you're like, I, it depends if you just want it for your own personal use, like then that's fine. But let's just say you're like, I want to work nine to five and do it occasionally. It's hard because some people want to see in the day or some people offers are presenting in the day or a new listing comes up in the day and people want to see it right that minute. And you could have shown them homes for eight months and they want to see a house at nine 30 in the morning and you're at work till five and then they call somebody else to go see it. So that's a bit frustrating. So it just depends if you're doing it strictly for your use or for friends and so forth. Um, it's not what everybody thinks it is. Like there's lots of dues and fees and you have to be a part of a whole bunch of boards and so forth and insurance, etc. Like a lot of people are like, I can just turn on a light and make 20,000 or whatever. And it's not uh, easy like that. Sometimes, don't get me wrong, it is. But then lots of times it's not. So you could show people homes for 10 months and they don't buy or they buy, but they buy with their sister who just got their license the week before, even though you've been showing them the whole time. Uh, or you could have their home for sale and spend a whole bunch of money on marketing. And then let's just say you said to list at 800,000, they want to list it at a million and you, you know, you market at a million, this whole thing, then they cancel and they're like, Oh, we're just going to stay. And then the next day they realist it with somebody else for 800, like you told them to do the whole time. And then you lose that money. So there's more to it than a lot of people think. But, um, I did the hustle, the hustle. I did like massage still and real estate, um, just to make the bills make sense. And I also um, bartended as well. So it can be juggled, to be honest. Um, I don't remember what you're saying me to for Catherine, because sorry, it's delayed and I was chatting a bit. So I apologize. Um, but thank you, Catherine, for asking. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say about the radio today. So I was driving and no worries, Catherine. Um, you still, and then online, um, a girl at my office, for example, the one she had to do online and she had to like turn her computer around to make sure there was nobody there. Like that was basically giving her the answers because they did it in front of, um, like a, not a zoom, but whatever, like online, but they had to show that there was nobody in the room that they weren't cheating. But then the other exam she did, they didn't do that. And then now they've done them in class again. The exams just depends obviously what 
color or phase or whatever of COVID we're in. Um, and they're always multiple choice, just an FYI. So if you are good at multiple choice, awesome. If you're not, they have like little um, things that you can buy. Um, I forget what they're called to be honest because I didn't do them, but um, they're like help study help guides. So anyways, good luck with that. Um, okay, so what I was going to say on the radio that they did of a poll of 2,000 people lately, they were 18 to 34. Um, eight out of 10 of them said they enjoyed gardening more than going to a nightclub, which I bartended till I was 30, so I found that very odd. Um, and over 50% of them said that they would rather garden than nightclub, go to a nightclub. And um, they said that they... Uh, have plants in their homes and they feel that it makes the home nicer. They th said it helps with their mental health and they said it makes it feel cozy. And the average 18 to 34 year old spent $452 on plants, which is crazy to me, but maybe because I'm not a gardener. Um, and 66% of them said they also liked gardening, like the shopping part of it, like buying the soil, buying the tools, etc. which is very different since I grew up in such a nightclub area or phase or what have you. Um, and 58% of them said that they uh, spent more in the past 12 months in gardening than they ever have during COVID. And 56% of them said it definitely kept them sane during the pandemic. Um, you feel the gardening, Sarah, that you're spending more gardening? Um, I am definitely not a gardener. Scotty knows my lack of gardening. I kill everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have fake plants. Even that plant out there on my balcony is fake. I have lots of fake plants. I have fake things. Um, let's see if I had another question. I asked Marilyn's question, I think. Not I asked, I answered. Yeah, so that's it. So anyways, stay safe. Um, feel free again to nominate anybody for the $2,500 giveaway. If you guys have any questions, feel free. I'm always available. I don't always look on Facebook or Instagram, to be honest. Um, you can call me at 705-321-2879. Again, 705-321-2879. Or you can email me at kristen at cripshomes.com. Again, Kristen, and it's with an I, Kristen, two I's, mm -hmm. at cripshomes with an S, homes.com. And I would happily answer any of your guys' questions about investing or so forth. Um, I've done lots of flips. I've had lots of rentals, long-term and short-term and would be happy to help you guys out. Hope all is well and uh, have an amazing night.